Um, I don't believe we have council member Beck in attendance. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and jump into the presentation. Um, this uh, community meeting is about our storm drain project, uh, 7th Street at Burnett storm drain rehabilitation. My name is Dylan Johns. I'm the assistant project manager uh, for the city on this project. Uh, Mike Bennett is uh, the main project manager for this. Uh, he is also on the call. Um, so this project came out of the city's storm drain rehabilitation program, which is something that we've been working on over the last few years to uh, proactively maintain and upkeep um, the aging storm drain pipes in the city to prolong their service life. Um, these projects are identified in areas um, that the city either knows have a history of pipe failures. Uh, we know that the pipes were installed um, a long time ago so that they're older and you know in need of maintenance. And there's also some institutional knowledge within the city of just areas that historically have problems with the infrastructure where we can go in and try to identify these problems. We do that through a closed circuit television inspection. Um, there's basically a small uh, robot with a camera on it that we can drive down the pipes. Um, those videos are then reviewed to identify defects in the pipe. And then those defects, uh, the pipes are then prioritized based on the severity of the defect and the location of the pipe for um, us to then go in and address uh, those problems. The, we, would, we try to address all of our problems with um, using trenchless technologies when possible. Um, it's not always possible on these projects for us to do that, but that is our goal. Um, the trenchless technologies um, minimizes the amount of excavation we have to do. So it, it minimizes the impact to all the residents and short tends to shorten the construction duration. Um, some of the common uh, types of trenchless technologies that we use are cured in place pipe, which is uh, basically a flexible liner that is um, slid into the existing pipe and then it's inflated to form to the existing pipe and then uh, using ultraviolet light or heat is uh, hardened to create a new pipe within the existing pipe. Um, geopolymer pipe lining also creates what is essentially a new pipe within the existing pipe, but this uses a mortar or a mortar like compound that is sprayed onto the inside of the pipe and is then cured and uh, binds to itself to create a solid uh, structurally sound pipe. And um, the last method we typically use is pipe bursting. Um, basically a kind of drill like tool is used to fracture the pipe and is uh, driven through the pipe and fractures the existing pipe, pulling a new pipe into place behind it. Um, and so for this project, um, we will be utilizing mostly trenchless tech uh, techniques. Um, we will be working uh, primarily along 7th Street in between Lexington and Cherry, and then we'll also be working along 6th Street in between Cherry and Burnett. Um, a, a little bit of background on this. It was identified through our rehabilitation program. Um, you can see the picture on the left is an example of what we get out of the videos to identify the defects. You can see the severe cracking in the pipe. Um, so this pipe is an older pipe and is showing signs of deterioration. So we are going to rehabilitate, rehabilitate it to stabilize the pipe, um, to prevent any potential failures. Um, HDR incorporated is providing the engineering design on this project. They'll also be providing, uh, support throughout construction. Um, we will mostly be using the cured in place pipe. Um, to rehabilitate um, the pipes on this project. 
there will be some excavation at the corner of 6th Street and uh, Burnett where we have to do a point repair. Um, there's a inlet along the side of the street there um, and the pipe connecting the inlet to the storm drain main in the street uh, is displaced. And unfortunately, we cannot repair that using a trenchless technique. We have to dig it up to um, and replace uh, the displaced pipe. Um, the, the main impact to residents from this project will be uh, temporary lane closures along 6th Street and 7th Street um, during construction. Um, the pipe is along the north side of the road, so it will affect uh, westbound traffic. Um, along 6th Street, we will have to close two lanes to give our crews room for the excavation and um, doing the uh, CIPP work. Um, and then, but along 7th street, only 1 lane will be closed and on both streets, we will shift the traffic lanes. So that we maintain traffic in both directions on 7th street and on 6th street, there will still be uh, 2 usable lanes for traffic to get through. Um, our crews will mostly be working through existing manholes along the storm drain pipe. So they are. The areas where we're working will be isolated to the immediate vicinity around the manhole. Um, most of the manholes are in or near intersections along um, this route. Um, and if any of those manholes are in a location where it would impact um, access for a uh, driveway or parking garage for a business or apartment or anything like that. We're going to work with those owners uh, to make sure that we nobody uh, loses access to their building or driveway or anything like that during construction. So we will provide accommodations or we will find ways to ensure that traffic can still come and go as needed. Um, we are expecting to start construction on this project in early summer of 2022. Um, we only anticipate it to last, uh, about 4 months. Um, and we're expecting it to cost about $700,000, but this is a, a low bid project. So, um, that will really be determined by the bids that we get. Um, and this lastly, this project is completely within existing city right of way. Uh, the pipe is underneath the roadway. Um, so. The city will not need to purchase right of way or easements or anything like this for this project. Um, and with that, I will open the floor to questions and um, that is the contact information for Mike Bennett and myself. If anybody would like to reach out to us. Uh, after this meeting, and if anyone has any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Or you can uh, put the questions in the chat if you would prefer to do that. I don't see any questions in the chat and uh, Jeff, do you think we ought to stop the recording and call it a call it a meeting?